Hello, and welcome to Peak Recording. My name is James Meter, and today we're going to be taking a listen to a new mic in the locker, the Biodynamic M201NC. To make things interesting, we'll also hear it against the Shure SM57. Let's take a peek. So here it is. This is the Biodynamic M201NC microphone. It's made in West Germany. It's a moving coil dynamic mic and it has a hypercardioid polar pattern. I decided to try it out after hearing it used on an acoustic guitar track where I thought it sounded really great. There's a few different versions of this microphone. According to biodynamic.com, they originated in the 60s and they were called the M201N. The N stood for low impedance and it had a three pole DIN connector. It was later redesigned and called the M201NC. The C stood for Canon Connector, which is the typical XLR that we use today, and is also the version I have here. Lastly, they made a model called the M201TG. Now the TG stands for Tour Group, and these microphones were redesigned to become more rugged. Now all three versions are supposedly the same in terms of electronics and how they're designed. The only difference is, is on the TG version, the very end of the body is flush with the XLR, while on the other version, there's a little bit of taper in the design. Otherwise, they're the same. To act as a comparison, I'd also like to introduce the Shure SM57. It's another dynamic microphone that was originally made in the 60s, and there's been a few different versions since then. It's a cardioid pickup pattern, and it's very widely used. According to recordinghacks.com, 75% of the recordings in your collection have this microphone used on them. I'm hoping that the SM57 serves as a familiar control variable for comparing the sound characteristics to that of the Biodynamic M201NC. Now let's go back and take a quick look at the frequency chart of the Biodynamic M201. You'll notice that it has a gentle rise starting around 6000 Hz, which lends itself to a natural or musical presence peak. The microphone also has a very subtle bass lift when used at close proximities to the sound source. The total frequency capture of the microphone is roughly between 40 Hz all the way up to 18,000 Hz. Now if we take a look at the frequency chart of the Shure SM57, you'll also notice a presence peak, but then that it has a roll off at the top end. And the same goes for the bottom end. A little under 200 hertz, you'll notice a drop off of the low frequencies. The total frequency capture of the Shure SM57 is between 40 and 15,000 hertz. Do your best to listen for the high and low end differences in the samples that you'll hear later on in this video. A quick word on the experiment here. I'm not setting out to determine that one mic sounds better than the other. Rather, I'm trying to figure out which microphone flatters the source best. For all the samples you hear, I use an API 512C preamplifier. You'll hear a comparison of top snare drum, electric guitar with some distortion, electric guitar that's a little bit cleaner sounding, and finally acoustic guitar. After you hear the samples, I'll circle back and I'll give you some general thoughts on the characteristics of each mic. With that, let's hear some tones.
So what'd you think? I was really surprised to hear very little difference between these two mics, but I did hear a difference. If you need to, please feel free to go back and give it another listen. Now if we take a very critical listen of the snare drum, it's interesting to hear that there's actually more cymbal leakage on the buyer than there is the Shure. I thought this wouldn't be the case because the buyer is actually a hypercardioid polar pattern, so I thought it would be tighter and more focused sounding. But what I'm actually hearing is that the backside of the polar pattern is actually picking up that high energy content. Now if we go back and look at the frequency chart for the buyer, we'll actually see that there's a spike around 8000 Hz. So it would make sense that the cymbals are being picked up in it. So if I were to use the buyer on a snare drum during a session, I want to make sure that the backside was pointed away from any cymbals so that I could isolate the snare sound and have control over it come mix time. Overall, when listening very carefully to each microphone, I feel like the Shure is a little bit tighter and congested sounding, whereas the buyer is more natural and open sounding. Now each one of these characteristics have their importance in a recording session. If there's an arrangement for a song that's very dense and I had to go with one mic, I'd choose the SM57 because it has a very clear sound within the context of a busy mix. And the opposite would be true for the buyer. If there was a song that the arrangement only had a few instruments in it and you wanted each instrument to take up as much space as possible, I'd go with the buyer. Other than that, I thought the tone of each of these mics sounded really good and they both take very high SPL levels so that means they can be used on a wide range of sources anywhere from drum sets to loud guitar amps maybe horns anywhere on stage they're both very durable I was even impressed with the buyer the version that I have isn't the one that's redesigned for touring but it's still really rugged and I think it could handle a drum hit if a drummer hit it with a stick that is so um, I'm not worried about that and I'm looking forward to using both these on future sessions well, thanks so much for stopping by and watching this review of the Bayer Dynamic M201NC and how it compares to the Shure SM57. I really appreciate it. If you could, please like and subscribe and ask any questions. I'd be happy to answer them and hopefully I can help. Hopefully this video was helpful. I'm hoping to make more videos like this in the future, so please let me know how I can change it up and make this better. And last but not least, a special thank you to Shure and Biodynamic Microphones for making great studio tools. They're awesome. Until next time, good luck chasing tones and take care. See you later.